Every four years it happens. Speeches and debates, campaign parades and promises, all centering on the election of a candidate to the nation's highest office. It's a time when there's no shortage of political talk and perhaps an excess of people and polls predicting the winner long in advance of Election Day. History professor Alan Lichtman of American University is like a lot of other people who go about predicting the winner of the presidential election. Except for one big difference. He's good at it. So good that his method has successfully predicted the winners of every presidential contest since 1984. More than that, when tested against elections in the past, it's confirmed the outcomes of presidential races going back to 1860. The keys work on a very simple decision rule. There are 13 keys, 13 simple yes-no questions about the political situation leading up to a presidential election. All the keys are phrased so that an answer of yes favors re-election of the party holding the White House. For example, there is no recession during the election year. And the way it works, if six or more of these keys go against the party in power, that is, there are six or more no answers, they lose. Any six or more, it's purely nonlinear. But if fewer than six of the 13 keys go against the party in power, they win. One of the major findings of my operations research model of presidential elections, the keys to the White House, is that the American voter is not being fooled by the hype and hoopla of campaigns. The American voter is not being manipulated by the consultants, the ad men, and the handlers that are so ubiquitous in today's politics. What his unconventional method suggests is that we might need to re-examine what the presidential election is about. At the desk. And who should sit at that desk? My friends, I am that man. Instead of being a political contest between candidates and parties, it's actually a yes or no vote on the performance of the party in the White House. Because of its origins, you'd expect ORMS to have many military uses. After all, the logistical challenge of running a complex and widespread branch of the service is not all that different from running a large corporation or a business. Still, the stakes are different when the mission has to do with national defense or protecting our country's interests around the world. Now, in the military, as in business, ORMS has to do with estimating the effects of a change in existing conditions. Not just any kind of change, but change that can actually threaten the delicate political balance in the world. Imagine bringing a nation's forces together in times of emergency. Think about the planning involved. Estimating troop size, the weaponry and equipment necessary, the most effective tactics, and you'll see the role of ORMS is quite critical. The point is, military ORMS specialists work to build models which reflect a host of real military and strategic concerns. And how much more real can you get than the events of the recent war in the former Yugoslavia? After years of conflict, the United States brought the warring parties together to find a peaceful end to the fighting. In this instance, military experts used a flight mission rehearsal system developed to help pilots prepare selective bombing missions to help achieve a ceasefire. These systems represent a pretty demanding mathematical problem. Combining satellite imagery in a digital terrain database and involve ORMS in helping manipulate that imagery and data efficiently. Well, after using these mission rehearsal systems to train pilots, the mediators decided to use the technology in a new way to persuade the presidents of the three republics that continued fighting would prove fruitless. What we were able to do was take uh, satellite imagery, match it to a point in the world with a digital terrain base so you could get basically the, uh, the contours or the three-dimensional imagery, the virtual reality. When the presidents of the three republics saw the high-resolution satellite photography matched over the mountains, where we could fly down at three-dimensional and pick up a house, a road, a car, that they saw the power that we had available to us in the terms of exploiting this mathematical technology. And they realized that our technology was so advanced that 
they couldn't hide at night because we could find them. And I think it was a, a very, very pronounced lesson to the three presidents. And our joint work has made it possible for the people of Bosnia to spend New Year's Day in peace for the first time in four years. What we were able to do was to show graphically to the three presidents where the borders were and how to divide up the borders and the road from Garajna to Sarajevo, the Muslim safe haven, to ensure there'd be a safe quarter. And it was after that, uh, that graphics demonstration to the president of, of Serbia that he agree to the peace conference. Well, as we see here, ORMS has some very important military applications today. Sophisticated applications that demonstrate not only how to win a war, but how to keep the peace. Business and politics are two ways management science applies to our world. But there are also more personal ways it helps people in worlds far removed from the business districts and profit centers of our cities.